welcome back to a new video. If you're new here, I'm Julie and this is my book to you. I have my last bookshelf here that I've never shown you guys and I wanted to reorganize it because I have so many new books that I want to put in this shelf. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to film this so you guys can see how I organize. And yeah, basically let's just get to it. I'm going to just be walking all over the place and you guys are just going to watch me put this bookshelf together. I'm trying to think of a different way for me to set this up, but I'm thinking this is going to be where I set it up for now. So let me show you guys the shelf right now. Then I'm gonna do a little bookshelf tour because this is the second bookshelf that you guys need a tour of that I haven't done. Well, actually the third. Yeah, because I showed two bookshelves, my book cart, and then this. And I still have to show you the back of my book cart, but that's a mess and that's a different, that's a, t that's a video for another time. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. So this is a little chaotic right now, honestly really ugly and I hate it, but whatever. Let's show you guys. Okay, so as you can see, I still have a lot I need to organize over there. So for those of you that watched my first bookshelf tour, which was part one, I showed the Addicted series, but I did not have some kind of perfect on the same shelf as the Addicted series. And the reason being is because I had them up top here with my roses and it looked all pretty, but I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do up there. This is my fantasy book bin. And it has the Shatter Me series and the Dance of Thieves and the Vow of Thieves. So this is the rest of the Akatar series and then this is what I just did. But I'm going to have to finish it up and figure out what I want to do here. But this is what I just did. Honestly, this shelf is adorable. I'm obsessed with the way it looks. How adorable is that? And this shelf needs some work. I honestly absolutely hate the way it looks. Um, yeah, we're going to fix that. And then the bottom shelf, also really ugly, but we'll figure it out. So, welcome to part two of my bookshelf tour, and this is my last bookshelf, and my little book bin over here, and a little area over here that has some of my favorite series ever, which is the Eden series and the Chestnut Spring series. So, the Chestnut Spring series is Elsie Silver, and the Eden series is Devney Perry. So those are two of my favorite authors ever, and they have their own little special spot that I'll show you guys in the video, and they will stay here, and yeah. So they are on full display, they get their own little area in my room, and they're just perfect, I love them. So let's go through my bookshelf tour. As you guys will see, I just redecorated this bookshelf, so as of now, these are how the books are going to stay, but you guys know me and know that I like to reorganize every day. So as of now, these are how the books will look, and I'm really liking the way that they look. So we'll see if they stay this way. And this is going to suck because I realized that I'm going to have to take apart the bookshelves that I just did in order to show you guys the books that are behind the books that are in front. But 
this is what you guys want, this is what you guys will get. So let's get to the video. So the top bin up here just has my fantasy books. So it's a Shatter Me series, the Akatar series as you can see, and then it has Dance of Thieves and Val Thieves. And I don't really feel like showing you guys that because they're organized in a way that will just be so annoying to put back together. But those are the books that are in the top bin up there. But I will show you the rest of the books and show all of them. So I'm going to take these apart in a way that I know to put them back in the same order that they were just in. Cool. So I'm going to just hold the camera so you guys can see what's back here. So we have some of Melissa Foster's books. So it's The Sweet Sexy Heart, Temptated by Love, My True Love. Then we have a book that was sent to me by Amy herself. So it's Amy Catherine's book, Holding Superman's Hand. Then we have a book that Valentine PR sent me and it's Saved the Best for Last. Then we have another book that was sent to me from the author, which is The Art of Loving You, which this cover is so adorable. And then another book that was sent to me from Valentine PR, which is The Player Next Door by Kay Tucker. Okay. And then we have this series, which is from Alejandra and these covers are absolutely so cool. I've never seen covers like this. Wait, there's one. This is my favorite one. Like, look how beautiful that is. She sent me these books and sent me the cutest PR package with them, which came with all the different bookmarks and just the prettiest book package ever. And I just love the cover of her books. I think this cover is also amazing. Yeah, I love this. So beautiful. So these were the books that were behind those front books. And now I'll get to the books that were in front. This is really going to be a lot of work of going back and forth, but it's fine. I'll do anything for you guys. Let's put it in the order that it was in. Okay. So out of this row, I read five out of the 11 books here. So I've read Runaway Groomsman, Every Summer After, One True Loves, The Kiss Quotient, and Maybe in Another Life. So, I'll go through them afterwards, but let me just show you guys all the books that are here. So this is Runaway Groomsman, then we have Every Summer After, One True Loves, The Kiss Quotient, Book Lovers, Maybe in Another Life, After I Do, The Infinity Between Us, Secretly Yours, and Something Wilder, and then Daisy Jones and the Six. So, Runaway Groomsman is by Megan Quinn. If you guys like the movie The Notebook, I beg of you to read this book because it gave the exact same vibes for me and this was one of the most wholesome books I've ever read. It is more story and character build than it is steamy and I don't know if that throws anybody off, but this was one of the cutest romance books I've truly ever read. It really read like a movie and it really reminded me of The Notebook, so I really loved this book so much. It was so wholesome and so pure and just so beautiful. It just gave me all the feelings of home. It was really just the cutest book. And then Every Summer After. So if you like the book Love In Other Words, I guarantee you will like this book as well. So it also goes through the past and present timelines and it's a childhood best friends to lovers book and just such a good book second chance lovers also i loved that book so much then we have one true loves this book i actually think i need to do a reread because it didn't hit me as much as it hits everybody else i don't know why i just think that it was so unrealistic for me that i couldn't really enjoy the book because i just thought that the plot and the storyline was just so unrealistic so for those of you that know this book, her husband gets lost at sea and then returns and she's with a new husband or boyfriend. I can't remember if it was she had married a new man or that was just her boyfriend. But wait, I think the I think the first line is like, oh my god, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so fiance. So her husband gets lost at sea and years pass and she's now engaged to a new man and then her husband comes back. So that's not a spoiler, it's set on the back and the first line of this book is I am finishing up dinner with my family and my fiance when my husband calls. So I think I need to reread this book because when I read it I was just like come on like that's so unrealistic that I didn't think it was that beautiful but I love Taylor Jenkins read so I need to give this a reread maybe I just wasn't in the mood I was just like having a bad day or something it didn't hit me as much as I would have expected because normally I don't say like oh my god so unrealistic I wouldn't like it but 
I don't know, it just didn't hit. But I want to read it again because it was such a cool storyline. And honestly, Taylor Jenkins Reid, her writing is just so beautiful. So I do want to read this again. But that was that book. And then The Kiss Quotient. This book was so good. I absolutely loved it. And... It's fake dating and he teaches her the ways of dating and some steamy moments happen in here that he's teaching her. So it was cute, steamy, genuine, just a good lighthearted read. So I really did enjoy this book. Book lovers I haven't read yet, but very excited to read this one. Then we have Maybe in Another Life. This book is one of my favorite books I think ever. I've talked about it in previous videos, but I really think that the way that this book was written and just the story itself was so unique and it just blew my mind when I read it. I read it in one sitting and it really is a book that I'll always remember just because it was so unique and just so well written. To talk a little bit about this book, it's a parallel universe with a woman who faces the consequences of two different lives that happen from one night. So that might be a little confusing to understand but it's one night and if she chose one way it's hard to explain it so it's one night that leads to two different paths of lives and she has two different lovers in both parallel universes but both lovers are seen in both universes i don't know how to explain it without literally sounding like absolutely ridiculous but this was truly such a good book i definitely recommend it and some of the most mind-blowing quotes are in here. It's just such a beautiful book. So definitely read that. Definitely recommend it. After I do another Taylor Jenkins read book, I haven't read it yet, but I'm excited to read it. So The Infinity Between Us, haven't read this one yet, but I'm excited to read it. I've heard great things about this, and a lot of people recommend this book to me. Then Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey is a book that I recently just bought, so I'm very excited to read this one. Also obsessed with this cover. Just going to show you guys again. And then Christina Lauren's Something Wilder. This is another book that I also just bought recently and another book that I'm obsessed with the cover and obsessed with the colors. Just all the sunset vibes I love. And then Daisy Jones and the Six. And you guys already know I want to read this soon. So that is the completed first row of this bookshelf. And then moving on to the second row, which is going to be more difficult to show because the way that it's set up is different than the way that the first one is set up so that everything can fit but this is how we're gonna do it so let's take these out okay so over here should I flip this okay so this is the back of the second row of this bookshelf so we have the legacy dirty headlines and then vicious so these are two LJ Shen books that I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to read them. I've heard great things and seen a lot about them on my book talk, so I'm excited for this one. This is The Legacy, the last book in the Off Campus series that I haven't got to yet. And it's over here and not with the rest of the books because it's a taller version and I refuse to put it with the rest of the books because it throws off the vibe for me. Moving on to the right side, we have two of Charlie Rose's books, which is Bad Habit and Bad Intentions. And my best friend Ellie loves these books and always raves about these books so i'm very excited to read these and then we have the lies we tell by becca Steele, before we were strangers which is one of my favorite books ever it's friends to lovers and second chance romance for some reason if you guys know the movie serendipity this book reminds me of that movie and i don't know why i don't know if you guys are going to disagree but it does for me so then we have Penelope Douglas's book. So I haven't read any of her books yet, and I know she's a hit or miss author. Some people either love her, and then some people either hate her, but I'm excited to try out her books. I do know that they're steamy, so I want to try to read her books this year. So we have Bully, Punk 57, Birthday Girl, and then Credence. I've heard the craziest things about Credence, actually, but I'm excited to read these. I definitely will give them a try. I'm excited to see what I think about them. And then... The last one we have here is Marriage for One by Ella Mays, and she's one of my favorite authors ever. She's one of the authors that got me into romance books, and this was one of my favorite romance books. It's such a pure and genuine romance book. So, moving on to the books that were in front. Let's set this up. Let's put the books back. Whole little thing we got going on here. The Never After series, which I finally just completed. I was in Target, and they had the rest of the Never After series, which was Wretched, Scarred, and Twisted. 
Being completely honest, I have no idea the order of where these books go. Oh, let's look them up so I can put them correctly on my bookshelf, but I do know that Hooked is first, and I'm going to be reading that soon. For those of you that know Alexa Ray, she recommends these books all the time, and she's the reason why I'm going to read them, because I love her, and I love her book recommendations. We literally have the exact same taste, and she loves these books, so I'm so excited to read these. And then we have The Mile High and The Right Move. Okay, let me put these back, and, and then we'll go through all of them. Okay. So this row I just completed and I'm obsessed with the way that it looks because these are some of my most anticipated reads. So I've read the first two books in the Dreamland Billionaire series, but I finally got the final offer, which is the third book and the final book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. So let's go through all the books and then we'll talk about them. So these are the Never After series. So it's Hooked, Wretched, Scarred, Twisted. But let me look them up to see the order of them so that they're put on there correctly. Okay, so <laughs> it's hooked and then scarred and then retched and then twisted. Okay, all right, so just those two were mixed up. Not bad, not terrible. And then we have Mile High and The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford, and these are two of my most anticipated reads. I want to read these right away because everyone is raving about these books and. I'm seriously so excited. Also, these covers are absolutely amazing. I seriously can't wait for these. I know that I'm going to love these. And I really think I'm going to like The Right Move more than Mile High. And I'm just so excited about it. The Right Move is about a professional basketball player. And the things that I've seen about that book just make me so excited to read it. So I can't wait to get to it. And then we have the Dreamland Billionaire series. And... It's finally completed and nothing makes me happier than seeing them all together. But we have the fine print, terms and conditions, and the final offer. So as of right now, I enjoyed the fine print more than terms and conditions, but I have a feeling that the final offer is going to be my favorite. For those of you that know the Dreamland Billionaire series, you know that Rowan and Zara are in the first book, and then it's Declan and Iris in the second book, and then in this book, it's Cal and Alana. So, I can't wait to get to this book. I have heard great things about it. I'm pretty sure it's friends to lovers and second chance romance. And the things that I've seen about this book are so beautiful. And I've honestly only heard good things and seen good things about this book. And I just can't wait to get to it. It's a lot thicker than the first two. And I'm just so excited to have it. So, I can't wait to get to it. The last row is going to be annoying, but let's get to it. So this is the back of the last row. So starting from the left, we have The Two of Us, Hollow Heathen, Still Breathing, Filthy Little Pretties, Sinning Like Hell, Just Like Heaven, Beautiful Disaster, Walking Disaster, The Family Upstairs, His and Hers, The Woman Outside My Door, and then Everything I Know About Love. Every single book here I have not read yet, but I'm excited to get to them. But let's put back the front part of that shelf and then go through those. And then that is the final bookshelf tour of my last bookshelf. So these are the last books of this bookshelf tour. So here we have In Five Years, The Simple Wild, Water Under the Bridge, The Love Hypothesis, Archer's Voice, The Light We Lost, Beach Read, Malibu Rising, The Friend Zone, and then After. Now that you've seen it, I don't need to show you guys the floor. You can see my face again. <laughs> For the bottom row here, I've read In Five Years, the Love Hypothesis, Archer's Voice, and The Light We Lost. So these books were all so good. Out of the four, my favorite is Archer's Voice. This is one of my favorite romance books ever. I remember the way I felt during the entire reading process of this book, and I'll never forget the way I felt during it because I went into it completely blind and had no idea what the book was about. I just went into it completely blind, so it was a surprise and definitely a beautiful surprise. It's one of my favorite romance books. I did think it was so cute. It's about Brie and Archer. So Brie moves to this small town to get away from her 
old life and she wants to start fresh. So she meets the grumpy man who no one in the town talks to. He is very misunderstood and he is a man who is unable to speak given the circumstances he was dealt, but I'm obviously not going to tell those circumstances because when you read it, it's a, one of the craziest moments that you will read and it's a huge spoiler if I were to just tell you what happened. But he's physically unable to speak but he uses sign language and you would think reading a book that deals with someone who physically can't speak would be kind of weird but it genuinely was so beautiful and there's a huge moment in this where he uses sign language to tell her that he loves her and it was just so beautiful and just one of the most beautiful books i've ever read so that's a little bit about this book and then the light we lost so I can't remember too much about this book because I read it almost two years ago, but I do remember that this book was one of the saddest books that I've read. It was heartbreaking and maybe I'll give it a reread because I remember being so deeply touched by this book. It just, I read so many books after it so I cannot remember exactly what it was about, but I remember when I first read the prologue of this book and I was like, wow. I remember I read it in Fire Island, one of my favorite places to go in the summer. It's literally my happy place and I can't wait to go there this summer. But I read this on the beach in Fire Island. I will never forget it. When I first opened it up and I read this page, I was like, this book is about to be so good and it's going to break my heart. So let me read it to you guys because it was so beautiful. So the prologue. I'll show it to you guys first. So it says, We've known each other for almost half our lives. I've seen you smiling, confident, blissfully happy. I've seen you broken, wounded, lost, but I've never seen you like this. You taught me to look for beauty. In darkness, in destruction, you always found light. I don't know what beauty I'll find here, what light, but I'll try. I'll do it for you, because I know you would do it for me. There was so much beauty in our life together. Maybe that's where I should start. I want to cry right now reading that and I also want to read this book again right now. I am shook. That is genuinely one of the most beautiful prologues I've ever read and it hits the same every time if not even harder. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Maybe I've just convinced some of you guys to read this but I also just convinced myself to reread this so wow. Definitely read this, guys. I remember it truly breaking my heart, but it was so beautiful. Um, let's put these back. Oh, wait, no, I didn't show the rest yet. Okay, so then next we have The Love Hypothesis. I read this before it became, like, pretty popular. I remember I went to Barnes & Noble, and it was there, I think, on, like, the book talk table. And normally I try not to go near that because I'm, like, cringed out going to that table now. Like, when I go there and then people are just probably like, oh, my God, she's just, like, here from book talk. But, like yeah and what about it like mind your business but whatever this was one of the books that was on the table from like book talk recommendations so this book is a fake dating book and it's a student and a professor and so good i remember really enjoying this book and it's about a phd student and as you guys already know i'm a psychology major so i loved the psychology phd like whole shebang about this book and it was just really fun. The fake dating was really good. Adam Larson is the male main character in this book. And it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I can't say anything bad about it. I definitely wouldn't say it's my favorite romance book ever. But it's definitely a book that I enjoyed. So I definitely recommend it. And then last but not least, In Five Years. So when I first started this book, I remember being so invested in it. And then I remember being very disappointed because it didn't take a turn that I wanted it to take. And it just didn't give what I wanted it to give. It was like so good. And then I was like, oh, you lost me. But I do remember it being a good book. Okay, guys. So that is it for today's video. This was part two of my bookshelf tour and now that I am finishing this up I am going to be doing a part three because I still haven't shown the rest of my book cart but that is a video for another day. So this was a completed tour of my third bookshelf and an organizing video as well because I did have to put this together in order to show it to you guys because it was not organized and now it is and this was a completed organizing bookshelf tour. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will definitely be seeing you in part three of my bookshelf tour, but it's going to be my book cart. But 
I will see you guys there. But there's going to be more videos in between these two bookshelf tours because I like to split it up and show you guys what you want to see. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time.